Photo Tools 2.5 using the masking bug. Alright, welcome back. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about using the new masking bug tool inside of Photo Tools 2.5. I'm just going to go ahead and open up Photo Tools and let's get started. Alright, with this landscape image, we kind of have a storm passing, so it's kind of dark and cloudy on the left hand side, and we can start to see where it's clearing on the right hand side. What I really want to do is I want to magnify the difference between those two sides. I want to make the left hand side look even darker and more stormy and the right hand side I want to make it look even more sunny. So we're going to use a couple different effects here in Photo Tools to kind of magnify the differences to enhance those two sides. And we're going to use two categories of new effects in Photo Tools 2.5. The first are the new basic brushes. Basic brushes live in their own category at the top of the library right here. And you can see that there's brush tools for brushing things to make them darker or lighter or more contrast or less contrast or with more detail. And these are some basic brushes and tools that you'll find yourself using all the time. You notice they have the brush next to them. That means we're going to brush these in where we want them. I'm going to start out by darkening the clouds on the left hand side. I'm going to use the brush darker brush. Just double click to add it. You'll get a little warning that'll tell you, hey, this effect needs to be painted in. I'm just going to close this dialog so we don't see it any longer. And you'll see on screen I've got my brush tool selected. I'm just going to make my brush a little bit bigger. I'm using the bracket keys on my keyboard. And if we look at our masking pane, we can control the brush size, brush feather, and brush opacity. If you're not familiar with using the masking brush, go ahead and check out the masking brush tutorial. Now I'm just going to use this tool to darken up the left hand side a little bit. I really want to kind of bring these clouds down and make them even darker and more foreboding than they already are. And I'll probably even do a little bit of the same maybe on the grass on the left hand foreground. There we go. Let's really make that left side a bit darker. And I think I'm going to do the same thing on the right side, but let's make it lighter. So I'm going to use the brush lighter brush instead. There we go. And I'm just going to lighten up the areas on the right side a little bit. There we go. Let's go ahead and just turn our preview on and off. There's before and after. You can see how we've kind of already started to push the dark side to be darker and stormier and the right side to be a little bit brighter. And one of the cool things that happens when you see this happen in nature is oftentimes you'll get a little bit of a rainbow. So we're going to use our first of the new masking bug effects. I'm going to go to the Landscape Enhance category. I'm going to go down and I'm actually going to select the Rainbow option. You'll note that all of the new masking bug effects have a little masking bug next to them. It's kind of like the masking brush. And when you add an effect that has the masking bug icon, it'll automatically add a masking bug for you. The Rainbow effect is actually going to add a little rainbow for us and we can select where it's going to go. In this case, I'm going to put it in the upper right hand corner of the scene. Just select upper right and then click Add to Stack. There we go. We can see how it's added a completely round rainbow. In the middle, we see the masking bug. Now, if you have focal point, you'll, this will look pretty familiar to you. It's just like the focus bug inside of focal point. We're going to use it the same way. I'm just going to use the legs that stick out of the sides to determine the size and the shape of the area that's not going to get the rainbow. So I'm just going to turn and pull those legs out. And I can also click in the middle and move it around. I really just want this rainbow to just be very subtly in the upper right hand side of the image. I'm just going to turn our masking bug. We just want it to be in the upper right. Once you've kind of set the position of it, you can use the right hand antenna to control the fade amount, or basically how strong it's going to be. So you can see as I move that in or out, the rainbow is going to get stronger or weaker. Now we want this to be a pretty subtle effect, so I'm only going to use about a 30 or 40 percent on my fade amount. Then if I wiggle that right hand antenna up and down, I can change the feather or how quickly it transitions from one effect to another. If I crank this way up and I turn it way down so that the feather is zero, you'll see I have a very hard artificial edge. And For an effect like this, that looks pretty silly. But as we bring the angle up, you can see how it increases the feather and it transitions much softer. Right, so for this, I'm going to go for about a 40 feather and about a 40 opacity, right in that range. There we go. I got just a little bit down here in the bottom. I'm going to make my size a little larger and pull it down just to make sure I only have that rainbow just where I want it. 
There we go. So now we have just a subtle little hint of a rainbow between the rainy side and the sunny side. All right, that's looking a bit better. I think I still want to add a little bit more sun to the right-hand side. So I'm going to use an effect from Kevin Kubota that lives in the Landscape Enhanced category called Sun Glow. I'm just going to add Sun Glow, select the More option, and add that to our scene. And now because I really only want it on the right-hand side of the scene, we're actually going to use a masking bug to place it where we want it to go. You can use a masking bug with any effect, just like you can use the brush with any effect. So to add a masking bug, just select the Mask Bug tool, and then click on your image. This will go ahead and add another masking bug, and it will actually copy the exact size and shape of your previous one if you want to. So I'm just going to take that new focus bug that we've added for the sun glow effect. So I'm just going to drag it over to cover the left and only let it touch the right hand side. And now by adjusting the feather, I can control how quickly it's going to graduate from being on to off. So we want a pretty big feather on this one. We really want it to change slowly. There we go. Let me turn that preview on and off so you can see. There you go. You can see how only the right hand half of the image is getting that sun glow effect, kind of adding in a little kiss of sun onto those highlights. Good, that's looking a bit better. All right, let's push this illusion even farther. Let's actually add a little bit of rain on the left hand side. We're going to go back to landscape enhance and we're going to use the rain category. Actually, rain's a little hard. Let's choose drizzle. I'm going to add a little bit of drizzle. Let's go ahead and click the add button. There we go. We can see we've added a little bit of rain. Now, again, we really only want that on the left-hand side. So we're going to use the masking bug again. I just select the masking bug, click on my scene, and it automatically adds that masking bug in for me. And it only affects part of the scene. Now, rather than being on the right-hand side, we only want it on the left. So I'm just going to move my masking bug over here. There we go. We can see how it now only affects the left side. And we're going to make that pretty subtle. We just barely want to see that rain. So I'm going to pull it down to about 20 or 30 percent. There we go. That looks pretty good. All right, I think we're going to add one more thing. We're just going to add a nice vignette all the way around our image. You can add vignettes using the masking bug as well. Let's go down to our edge treatments. Add the edge vignette dark. Select the masking bug options at the bottom. I'm going to use the overlay option. That creates a little bit more subtle vignette. We'll add that. And you'll notice that when I added this vignette, I get a different looking focus bug. I actually get a round shape rather than a square shape. This is a good time to actually talk about the shapes of the masking bug, how you can change them, and also how you can view the mask to see what they're doing. So I'm going to scroll down here to the masking pane. And you'll notice at the bottom there's a mask bug pop-up. And I can select either round or planar, or I can turn the masking bug off for the given effect that I'm working on. You can also view the mask. So just like we show the mask when you paint, you can also see the mask that's created by the masking bug. So I'm just going to turn that on. There we go. You can see that round masking bug shape. And as I grab the legs and I pull and twist on those, you can see the shape of the mask that we're going to create. And as I wiggle the right hand antenna up or down, you can see the feather on the edge, the transition between the effect being on and the effect being off. Now this is for the round shape. If I change this to the planar shape, you'll see how it creates more of a square shape that runs through the entire image. The round bug is good for creating a vignette or a round shape, and the planar bug is more for creating a graduated filter. So for graduated neutral densities and things like that, this is the one you'll want to use instead. All right, so we were going to use this as a vignette. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it back to round. There we go. And let's turn our mask back off. I'm just going to size this so it just touches the edges of my image, just using little legs that stick out of the sides. And then that right-hand antenna controls how much it darkens. I'm going to leave that upper right-hand corner light. That's the nice thing about the overlay effect, is any highlights aren't going to get darkened. And a lot of times in even yet, you want to leave one corner a little open. So let's pick a nice strong feather and a low amount, about 30 or 40. There we 
we go. Alrighty, let's go ahead and turn this on and off so you can see the difference. There's the original image, and there's our results after we're using photo tools. Let's walk through the steps that we did. We started here with our original scene. We used the new brush, darker brush, to darken the left-hand side. And then we brushed the right-hand side a little bit lighter. Then we added a rainbow very subtly at the transition of the two. I added the sun glow effect and painted it in just where I wanted it on the right-hand side using the masking bug. Then we did the same thing by adding a little bit of rain on the left-hand side, again, just using the masking bug. And then finally, we added a vignette on all the edges using a masking bug as well. All right, there you go. That should give you a quick idea of how you can use the masking bug to selectively apply effects on your scene.